Welcome to Gar's Graveyard Garage. It's a gloomy day, so that means it's a good day to go rescue something. And uh, thanks to this guy right here, who called me up the other day and said, hey, you want another RV? Sure. Yeah, so let's go get this thing. What's going on everybody? We are on our way to pick up a 1989 Winnebago and it's a little one. So me and uh, Ice over here are in the truck. This time we're using mine because fortunately it comes with a tow bar rig already mounted. So we're gonna try to use that and hopefully it makes it here, but it's Luckily, you're right down the road, so. What could go wrong? With with us? <laughs> nothing, nothing. We have, we have the luck with the Irish. <laughs> I, think. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you're still recovering <laughs> your damage. But uh, we'll tune back in when we arrive so you can see what we got. There it is. The Winnebago Lasharo, 1989 model, built on as he would say, a Renault, but it's a Renault chassis drivetrain. Um, it's now raining on us, and my truck don't stop real good because I don't have ABS right now. Get ready for some good footage. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna try and pull this up out of this spot where it's been abandoned for years. Uh, we're in an RV park. So people lived in it years ago and I just abandoned it and told the property owner keep it and so he gave it to us so it hadn't run in almost a decade it's been sitting here not a problem we'll we'll see what we can do but it only has 40 44 44 thousand okay. 44 and change 44 thousand original miles on it so i have faith we can make it run again sure. but uh okay we're gonna try and get this thing out of this hole okay first part of the sketchiness we've got a uh, toe strap on this thing we're gonna see if we can pull it out <laughs> It's in neutral, right? Yes, I did yesterday. Okay. Yeah, he uh, came and prepped for us. Okay. Come on, girl. Uh-oh. Make sure the e-brake's not on. Otherwise, we're going to have to get ugly with it. I think it's just in a hole. It's a Renault, so I don't know anything about where anything is on that. I have never touched a Renault. Down. It's down? Was it on? No, it was down. Oh, it was down. It's got a handbrake like this. Oh, okay. All right. I think it's just, just going to get out the hole it's in. Hold on, let me get a little run and start at it. You're gonna need to turn it. <laughs> huh? Turn it. That's what I asked you to turn yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm watching other directions. <laughs> locked. It locked? Yeah, we don't have keys to this thing. Uh, well, let's figure that part out. I know. Go ahead and take the strap. Whoa. <laughs> that thing's heavy. <laughs> Hey, it rolls good. It rolls real good. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead and take the strap off. Let me get out of the driveway and then uh, we'll see if we can get the steering loose. Uh, 
Well, that just turned into a bigger job. It'll go in neutral, but steering is locked. And finding Renault keys around here, <laughs> not happening. So, uh, yeah, we'll be right back. Okay, after careful review yeah. and analyzing. You mean the steering wheel lock? <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> steering being locked. We're going back to the garage to grab one, his rig to pull this thing because he stops better than me and probably pulls better than me. Oh, but we need, <laughs> we need we need tools and possibly worst case scenario a drill to get that ignition which switch is all in my truck <laughs> yeah which is all in his truck so we're just gonna we're gonna go get that and swap trucks and we'll be right back all right we're back this part wasn't family friendly but nope. <laughs> <laughs> we got the uh ignition switch out and uh now we'll be able to uh turn the wheel <laughs> yeah turn the wheel and hotwire it when we're ready to and uh trying to find one of these is probably gonna be fun yeah, but uh didn't damage the actual casing just the switches in a billion pieces so all right we're gonna get this pulled out now and uh hooked up to the truck yeah that'll it'll hold you won't hear nothing with that thing running <laughs> all right it's hooked up finally uh out of the hole it's been in for years you can back tell it's been hole. sitting down there a while yeah sure. but yeah we should make it back safely <laughs> ish did you say should <laughs> <laughs> all right back on the road we weren't rolling but we had to pull out of that rv park and it's a blind spot where the speed limit goes from 55 to 40 like real fast and we had to pull out in the middle of it and uh of all the vehicles that we could have pulled in front of it was a giant propane truck i like uh, to pick them <laughs> yeah it could couldn't have been a you know a fiat or a prius no we had to pick a propane truck that's but that's not how we roll i'm glad he was paying attention and he braked for us because that could have been real ugly yeah but we're on our way uh back to the garage now and uh we're gonna try and find a spot to put this thing probably behind billy ray we made it back to the garage but now I got to move this thing out of the way. And you guys haven't seen this thing yet. Well, two of you have. Uh, so I'll explain this thing a little later, but for right now, let me get this Suburban out of the way. All right, we are here. <laughs> we're back. We can't figure out what, we thought they were using this insulation board to cover up holes, but it's like they were just trying to add insulation to the rv i i Instead of putting insulation in it they put it on it yeah well they put it in it too because they took this looks like they took the ceiling out and they insulated the ceiling which is good they broke out this piece of glass Just to for, yeah for for, window for the window unit, unit. Yeah. instead of fixing the the coleman that's on the roof that'd be too easy but this one actually has we noticed a generator so We'll have to, uh, yeah, they put that in a good spot to work on, didn't they? Oh my God, there's no room. Yeah, it is tucked. Oh, there's the gas tank for it. Yeah, that's okay. the gas tank for the generator. Uh, How would you work on that? Yeah. You wouldn't even, well, something you would pull out. More than likely, the only thing we're gonna have to work on is gonna be this carburetor. Luckily, it's right there. I don't even see a name. Mm -hmm, I have no idea. Oh, Usually right there, there's a plate. Kohler. Kohler. Oh, it is a Kohler. Okay. These are the Onans. Yeah, that's, what's, good, that's what the good. other one. Little guy thing, that's too funny. Uh, somebody, somebody couldn't get the hose off, yeah, so they just use that little, they cut it. Oh, well, it's it's turning. I don't know. We lose some pliers after yeah. six years. It loosened up. <laughs> it's a uh, kind of a mess now. I mean, I created more of a mess because we had to disassemble this. You did, but everything is here. I mean, it's not bad. Clean it up, clean up the seats, all the uh, overhead controls, everything. All of this is still here um carpet's actually nice i mean i've got to do a lot of vacuuming now uh yeah yeah we thought these were like stickers or something but this is actually there's snowflake like cracks burning, burning the glass. cracks in the glass but uh okay let's uh let's continue this little tour um <laughs> We're, we'll, we'll get to the motor later. That's going to be once we find out. We're going to see if this thing turns over and possibly runs. Sure it does. Uh, we can't open this door. There's something going on. Well, that lock is loose, so that probably explains why it doesn't work. 
and That's this wire. is how we had to break in. There was a dead bolt added to this thing, so we'll have to steel plate this or something. But we wired it. Shut, oh, remember? you wired it shut. You got your cutters on you? Of course. You I can reach it right there. <laughs> Excuse me, I gotta let me unlock the door real quick. Well, oh, this, we this is, uh, that's gonna be a propane probably. Yeah, that's LP. And then, oh. can't get into that. Okay. That Floor pan cool. is still solid. We took the cover off because somebody, off. yeah, we didn't want it to blow away. The seats are here. There's a bucket seats here. There's the bathroom. The original fridge is down here. And then your kitchenette, stove. They, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, pretty trashy in here. But we'll get this bed out of here. Put that on my trailer. Put it, yeah, that'll that'll go with you. <laughs> um, might have to reinforce. Yeah, that's pretty soft, ain't it? No, that's just the type of stuff they used. It's just a... I guess it ain't meant for walking on. No, no, that's not. Look, they got tape. Look, there's a roll. Move, move the roof again. Oh, it... <laughs> I guess that roll of tape. Is... <laughs> did you did you work on this? <laughs> I, I would have last year. They asked me to do some roof work. <laughs> Looks like there might have been a fire in the back. That was probably when they were. Uh, cooking things they weren't supposed to but there's a that fridge there we'll see if it works uh beds in the back but yeah and we have to disassemble this thing <laughs> they put it in there then put it together. yeah so they made a bunk bed i don't i don't know but overall <laughs> solid structure solid roof the cap or the yeah the cap's missing on this uh this fan but yeah, that's no biggie the, those are cheap um Pop a new AC unit. We're good to go. There's a furnace back there, but we'll do a we'll do a better tour when uh, we get stuff out of here. But um, yeah, turning into the uh, free RV guy. That's three free RVs, but sadly this one's in the best shape. The body don't need any work. <laughs> oh, it might. They uh, looks like they use what's that? What do they call that? F flex seal. <laughs> uh, that that's flex, that's flex tape. Now you're advertising. Flex, flex tape. <clears throat> Sponsor. <clears throat> flex tape. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's a. Uh, I had never seen one of these before. And uh, I went and looked them up, and they've been classified as snails and the slowest RV you could have. And that's probably why it only has 44,000 original miles on it. They're an easy 44,000. Yeah. <laughs> We thought maybe it had flipped, but no, sure enough, there's a zero in front of the four, so it's 44,000 miles. But no, the structure itself is solid. Uh, it's interesting, so. That's a, that's a good word. It's Yeah, that's the only word I can use. It's it's interesting. It it's uh, it's very aerodynamic, yet goofy looking. Aerodynamic, but not built to go fast. <laughs> <makes> no sense. <laughs> and I'm probably saying this wrong, so to the uh, Europeans, I'm sorry, but it's uh, based on the... Renault Trafica. Oh wow! Listen to you. <laughs> I think that's what it's. Uh, they use these as like transporter vans in Europe, and it's based on the the Trafica. I think is how they say it. I'm probably saying that wrong. Probably yeah, massacring I'm that. I'm sure you're saying it wrong. Here in Texas, we're gonna call this a Renault Trafica. <laughs> now I'm speaking Ice Man. Yes, you are. <laughs> so okay, well. uh yeah, that took longer than we expected because steering locked, but it's here. We got access to the wiring, so I guess the next steps will be, uh, before we clean it out, does this thing run and drive? Oh, surprise, surprise. First time maybe ever the brakes work. I don't know. It gave us one nice thing. That means it's probably going to be mean to us. You're but right. <laughs> You're right. but the brakes do work so one for three now we've got to get it running and driving it stops it, it stops we just it's need to make it go, it go. It go. <laughs> so okay well we'll be back when we uh i guess move on to seeing if the thing runs good morning it's the second day we got rained out yesterday so couldn't finish but let's find out what we got going on under this hood uh if I can figure out how to open it. Uh, oh, right here. Somewhere over here. There it is. Uh, 
there's a random switch land there. That's good. <laughs> Pile of funnels. Is there a hood prop on this? Oh. Yeah, there it is. Hold on. Let me get this set up. Well, how does this thing... There it goes. Well, maybe... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That O2 wire is cut. Oh, is that it right there? Yeah, that's probably that wire. Huh. Okay, we'll, we'll have to fix that. Uh. Uh, all right. Right now, I guess you put double batteries in this thing. I'm not sure, I guess. But right now yeah and everything's tied together for right now though I'm only interested in power to the uh, unit let's check the oil it's uh, a little dirty but it's almost right at the full mark so that's good um, you might be able to get a what's you have to bear with me. Like I said before, I've never worked on a Renew. Uh, which one of those is the current? That one? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it feels like we can get a bolt down there. Um, I don't see any reason why it won't turn over because it was sitting a little less than a a little less than a decade. Um, I'm not going to be able to grab it by hand to turn it over. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think we just uh, throw a battery in it and see if it turns over. Um, if we can get power to it. I think, yeah. Let me grab a little battery. I'll just steal one out of Millie for right now. Throw a battery in here and let's uh, see if we get power to the truck. But I need to make sure the wires inside that I ripped apart off the ignition switch aren't touching because might have fireworks. Let me get set up and I'll be right back. Okay. Got the negative hooked up. Let's touch the positive and see what happens. Here, a door dinger. Ugh. Check inside real quick. <sighs> Got a loose connection. Ah, that one right there. And grab uh, something to tighten that up. Looks like a 7 sixteenths. Let's uh, hop inside and we'll uh, see what happens. We'll need to fix that wire on that O2 sensor, but we'll worry, worry about that later. That'll just be a, a code. Where's the coolant on this thing? I don't know, worry about that later. Okay, I believe that's the power wire. I believe this is the starter. Oh, well, it turns over easy. Um, one of these is power to spark. Can't see anything. Still junk on the dash. God, that's a light bulb problem. Let's see, is that it? 
no lights. What's this one? Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's ignition. Okay. Um, well, so that's that's ignition, and then this is starter. So let's uh, let's just drop some gas in the carburetor and see if it fires off, and then we can go from there. <laughs> the antique German fuses and some aluminum foil. So yeah, that's good. Okay, let me put a little uh, gas in the carb and then we'll try this. Guess I should have inspected it better. Fuel injection. Let's spray some starter fluid into the fuel injection. I guess that'll make it down to it. And let's touch the starter wire and see what happens. trying she tried this is gonna be a runner free can found inside the RV oh there's so much junk in here Okay, drive by wire. Come on, starter. <laughs> running. Still running. Still running. Still running. Really? You're kidding me. <laughs> well, this thing purrs. <laughs> um, I guess it was just running off that much starter fluid. Okay, so ignition system's good. Um, I don't know how much gas is in this thing. Uh, gonna find out. If it's an inline fuel pump or in the tank, hopefully not in the tank. Um, yeah, well, this little engine sounds great. I mean, it's only got 44,000 miles on it, but I've watched videos on these things and I've been trying to catch up on it. Apparently these engines blow up, uh, but this one sounds great. Yeah, fantastic. So, uh, let me figure out where the fuel pump is on this and find out if it's even getting fuel or maybe it's just out of fuel. Um, sketchy people may have siphoned the gas out. I have no idea. Um, the gas isn't too old. Might run on it. Shouldn't be varnished up. Just probably not powerful. But, um... Yeah, no, I'm stoked. This little engine sounds great. Um, so yeah, let me uh, let me do some research real quick and figure out where the fuel pump is. Okay, here's where we are. I managed to find the diagnostic manual, uh, basically the service manual for this rig, and wanted to verify we were getting fuel from the pump. The pump is is kicking on. Luckily, it's uh, on the uh, the chassis it's not in the tank um so i popped the line up here at the fuel rail and we are getting fuel so i was thinking okay maybe the injectors aren't firing and basically i'm noticing everything i'm going over is steps somebody else has done because i'm noticing loose parts and then right about when i started figuring those things out and i said i don't know i noticed Somebody else felt the same way. Somebody else said, I don't know. And they left the message carved into the paint. That's pretty funny. But with the manual, I was able to see what would make the injectors not fire. 
there's a bunch of sensors this thing uses to make the injectors fire, but only two of them would make them not work. Everything else uh, that would, if uh, like different sensors aren't working, it would throw this thing into a limp mode, but it would still fire. But if you don't have a speed sensor or the map sensor, if either one of those are bad, it will shut down the injection system. But I also read up on this diagnostic port right here. And this bottom left port is the fuel pump. So what I did was ran a jumper wire from the positive to that, kicked on the fuel pump. And I could hear it priming it not real fast, but I touched the uh, ignition wires together. It did start. So what I think we have is a weak fuel pump. I don't think it's uh, putting out enough pressure. Now trying to find parts for a Renault around here is impossible. So I'm having to use a lot of European websites for parts. And what I'm doing is I'm cross-referencing numbers and finding out there's like five or six vehicles for different things like the ignition switch, for instance. Uh, of course, I drilled it out. Um, found the original part in Europe, cross-referenced the number, ended up finding one on Amazon, which tied to a Nissan, but the wiring and everything else is the same. So it should work. We'll find out when it finally gets here. For the fuel pump, cross-referenced, I think, two part numbers and landed on this one. And it looks like exactly what's under this truck. So real quick, there's no room to film under there. This is a very low motor home. I'm gonna get under there real quick and we're gonna swap out this fuel pump. It's two leads, hose in, hose out. It's very simple. So I'm just gonna pop under there real quick. It's kind of in a real funky spot. They, they hit it on top of a brace. So I had to feel around and then I found it and then I was able to stick my head up under there and actually see it. So I'm gonna crawl under there real quick and we're gonna try that. Um, Oh, and if anyone was wondering, I did stick some fresh gas in it, and either the gas in this was good, or there was no gas in it, because when I checked the gas up here at the fuel rail, it's fresh. So it either had good gas in it, or the fresh gas that I put in it is making it up to the fuel rail. Anyways, enough jabbering on. Let me get under there and change out this fuel pump. All right. There's the old one, and there's the new one. Slightly different, but spec-wise, the same. Fittings-wise, of course, we had to screw that one on. But everything's the same, so hopefully, if this is all that's wrong with it, that's, a, that's a awesome. But figure we'll start there, and then uh, if that's not it, we'll move up to... Um, possibly the giant fuel filter that's on this thing, but I can't imagine that thing being that stopped up. Could be wrong. So, okay, let me crawl back under the truck now and get the new one on. Fuel pump is in. I verified it works by priming it directly to the uh, diagnostic port right there. So let's find out if she's gonna run now. Made this a little nicer for Jerry Riggin here. Key on. <laughs> Starter's been acting up, or possibly solenoid. Oh. Come on. Stay running. No, it's doing the same thing it did before. Uh, hmm. I wonder if that relay is bad. Could be. 
Oh, uh, let's try it again. Try to get hit the throttle this time. Yeah, see, it's, that's weird. But then it starts right back up. Okay, we're, we're getting somewhere. Let's try this. Let's try just leaving the fuel pump on. Still dying. <sighs> okay. It runs for a little bit, then dies. So we might actually have a problem map sensor or speed sensor hmm we're definitely getting spark that's obvious we're getting fuel but it's really weird unless we're low on fuel hmm maybe we could be really low on fuel I didn't put very much in there if it's something that simple. Uh, so when I run to town in a little bit, I'm gonna grab some more gas. We'll put like five gallons in this thing instead of one. It smelled bad, which is why I only put one in there. I was just trying to see if the uh, fuel gauge would move. It didn't. So let's try that next. I wonder if we're just running out of gas. I wonder if that's what it is. Hopefully, that'd be great. So. We'll be back. It's been sitting here running for, I don't know, 10 minutes. I threw some more gas in it just in case. It did the same thing it did with start, die, start, die. So this time I decided to hold the pedal down part way and start it and it actually sits here running. But if I let off the gas pedal, it dies. So right now I've got a screwdriver jammed in the, uh, in the throttle, uh, but it's sitting here idling. I'm trying to let it get up to temperature. It does have a miss, so maybe it just needs a tune-up. I'm sure it probably needs a tune-up. It's been sitting for almost a decade. Uh, yeah, so that's where we are right now. It's sitting here running. I've been waiting for the the cooling fans are in front of the radiator. So I'm trying to see if they're going to kick on or not. The oil light's on, but we obviously have oil pressure. Temperature's almost finally reaching halfway. Power steering wasn't working because there was no fluid in it. It's working now, so it must have a leak somewhere. But. Yeah, it just has, it has a has a light miss, which might be enough to make it not idle. So uh, I think the next thing will probably be spark plugs, run some fuel injector cleaner through it, uh, check the distributor cap, wires. Wires actually look okay. We'll check them anyways. But that's where we are. It's running. It's got a bunch of rattles. Hoping these fans kick on. It's trying to idle now.
Oh. Look at that. Just noticed a vacuum leak. Split hose. That will definitely do it. Yeah, so much junk shoved up under here. I'm glad I just noticed that. Um, where does that go to? I can't tell. Something back up in there. Okay, well, now that I just noticed that, air leaks will definitely cause a vehicle not to idle. So let me see if I can fix that real quick. I might be able to just chop the bad end of the hose off and reconnect it. Um, I thought I heard a hissing. I just didn't see it till now. So I'll be right back. Let's see if we can... Yeah, there's quite a bit of slack in that hose, so... Hopefully it's connected at the other end. I'll get on there. Feels like, yeah, it's connected to something. Yeah, I just can't see what it is. Let's uh, see if it'll start back up. Nope. That wasn't the problem, but I wonder if there's another, any more air leaks in here. Somebody's been in here because this bolt is missing, that bolt is missing, and that's what holds the fuel rail down. They have the center one in. Um, so they were probably chasing gremlins as well, which that term fits nicely because Vivian has named this RV Gizmo. She named it because uh, it's so ugly it's cute, but now we're chasing gremlins, so it all makes sense. So I think Gizmo is the perfect name for this thing. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have to get up in there, see if we have any more air leaks. There's so much emission junk on this thing. What we can probably do is if we can get it to lightly idle we can spray brake cleaner around here and see if it revs up. That'll tell us if we've got any more air leaks. Because I'm sure we probably do. Carburetor, you can get away with it. Fuel injection will definitely not make it run right. All oh, these hoses are still good. Okay. Yeah, let me uh if I can get it to idle again. Let's see. I had it jammed down. It took me a minute to get this thing to sit in the right spot. Oh, it's warm under here. I think that fan should have been kicking on by now. minutes to find it. Yeah, that might be about right right there. Let's try that. That's somewhat idling. Get some brake cleaner if it revs up anywhere. Oh. Yeah. The hose I just fixed. No? 
Might be this one. Okay, definitely got vacuum leaks. Like we're gonna have to take this out because there's a vacuum leak back up in behind there somewhere and i bet that fixes the idle problem so we'll be back well i found another cracked hose it was actually the other end of the one i fixed up top but we've got another one back up in here somewhere and so i need to go oh wait no uh, oh is that a mouse? It might be a dead mouse. I smell something cooking in there. Uh, yeah, let me go digging around in here. Got the doghouse off so we can inspect in there. But somewhere back here on the backside is another vacuum leak. So, uh, again, I'll be right back. Let me go digging. Well, after digging around all over this engine and realizing how many vacuum lines are back there i can't see we're gonna have to do this the right way so we're gonna actually do smoke so we're gonna run smoke into the intake and see if we can figure out where that leak is another thing i noticed is i must be trying to locate the exact same problem they had prior because i'm finding parts like i found the idle air control assembly was actually in the back of the the van uh they changed it out so yeah it goes back to the whole i don't know carved in here um they didn't know what they were doing i think they were probably limited on what they could do because of where it was parked and they were probably trying to do it themselves so we're going to see if we can continue i'm slowly catching up i think to where they left off but let's uh see if we can hopefully find this problem it runs good we just need idle that's all we need and then uh, we'll be able to do a test drive. Okay, I've got a little hose here that goes into the intake and we'll hook this up. Well, let's make sure we're getting smoke first. Yep, got smoke. Okay, let's see if it starts popping out anywhere. Right back there in the back where I can't see. Let me grab my uh, light. Let's see if I can figure out where that's coming from. Yeah, it's coming out real thick right back there in the back. Which we knew that because we were spraying uh, brake cleaner back there. It was popping out. Let me grab a light real quick. All right, I'm gonna have to do this from the inside because I can't see anything back here. And I'm not sure if I can see it from inside either because it's over there. The one spot we can't see, that's where the problem is. So I'll be right back. All right, I'll show you how useful those smoke machines are because I never would have found <laughs> these, these pipes that are, or hoses that are bad. This is the bad one, as you can see. Yeah, so that was split, but the reason I couldn't see it from the top is the hose clamp was right over the top of it. And then also, this one is starting to split, so we're gonna fix that one too. Still pretty soft, so we'll just cut off the bad part 
and it goes into this valve right here so or this uh t so we'll uh yeah so like problem is is it's back up in there so luckily i have just enough room for my my wrist to get in there to kind of do it so we found the leak uh let me fix that real quick and then put it back together and then we'll uh, smoke test it again just to be sure all right i think i got everything hooked back up so let's uh hit the smoke again and as long as it doesn't come out back there should be good If that's all it was, I'm going to be very happy. Yeah, we would have seen smoke by now. Oh, I'm seeing it over here now. Oh, well that's... Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> it just showed us that we have a taped up boot. But that's good. That means it's coming out back here. It's not on the intake. All right. Let's, uh... I guess hook up the battery real quick and uh, let's see how she runs now. What is going on? This time it's not even wanting to. What's going on? What's going on? She's just cold nature. We'll rev it up a little bit and then uh, see if she'll idle for us. I mean, I know it needs a tune-up. Can't tighten up that heat shield. That's annoying. Hey, it's running on its own. Definitely don't hear that vacuum leak anymore, but I might need to play with the uh, the idle because I did jack with it. I might have turned it down too much. There's an idle bypass valve up under here, and uh, I had turned it down the other day when I was messing with it. If I can do it by hand or not. Let's 
side wing, but it has a surge. All right, it's still running. It's got a, it's got a little surge to it. Uh, I know we have a leak up here in the, yeah, that boot's leaking. Uh, so definitely need to address that, because otherwise it's just sucking dust particles right past the filter, right here. They've got electric tape wrapped around it, but it might be enough to Maybe. Well, that was definitely the idle problem. So we got that fixed. Now we just got to uh, address, tune up. I gotta see if I can find a fuel filter for this thing. It's a big old monster. Uh, I probably won't be able to find a factory style. Might have to change it over to an inline something or other. But let me let this thing get warmed up, hit temperature. And uh, if the fans kick on, we'll do a uh, a little test drive and see if this thing's actually going to move under its own power for the first time in about a decade. Okay, this thing sitting here idling is not getting anywhere near temperature enough to kick the fans on, so we're just going to uh, go for it, and worst case scenario, we break down and have to tow it back, but let's see if we can uh, yeah, collide behind me, so I need to pull up. It moves. Uh, I think I got enough angle now to get out. Let's see if we got. Yeah, we got reverse. You adjust these mirrors. <laughs> this is kind of scary. Brakes feel fantastic. Oh. got everything off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> They're close. <laughs> Junk in here might start falling out the side door. The thing is quiet. There's no latch, so. One thing at a time. But I'm stoked. Okay. Get this thing back to the garage. thing is definitely not winning any races. <laughs> Speedometer work? No, of course not. Uh, 
I can't see anything. Ace Ventura time. Uh-oh, I'm getting the eyeball. Getting the eyeball. <laughs> what are you doing, Muppet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> it's running. It's kind of scary though. Is it? Oh, yeah, there's everything in the back was just falling down and then the door opened. <laughs> I think it's open right now. <laughs> the idle smoothed out. A little bit, okay. Now that, now that door broke. No, this one opened while I was driving. It did. Yeah. With the wind. Oh, you know what? I smell some bad, I think some bad gas. Uh, yeah, it's got a little bad gas in it. It's not too bad. It's enough to run. But we got it uh, somewhat cleared out. We got a bunch of the uh, junk out of here so we can start analyzing and going through all this and figuring out what we need to do. They. There's a uh, one cross beam where the ceiling is sagging right here that they replaced with. It looks like a shelf rail or something. But yeah, we're gonna gut this thing out and there's probably redo all this. We might reconfigure it, I don't know yet because the kitchen is right here in the entryway and then the couch is in the back. That fridge is not supposed to be there and that's gonna go with Iceman. The original fridge is right here. And then uh, if you've never seen one of these before, that's the bathroom and the whole closet slides out and then the uh, shower pan is under the floor right there. So it's uh, interesting. So uh, it's ugly, it's cute, it's gizmo. So this is a gizmo. Let's see what the temperature's doing. I didn't think about that. What temperature we got? Still running cold, so fans haven't kicked on yet. But, okay, let me uh, shut this thing down real quick. Um, yeah, it runs, it drives, it stops. It does all the things. Just need to do tune-up and oil change and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it's almost uh, been almost a decade since this thing's been on the road. But uh, we'll be back in just a second. All right, I think that's going to wrap up this episode with uh, the Winnebago Lachero Lachero the Renault, the Renault, all the names this thing has. <laughs> uh, but thanks to Vivian, it's Gizmo. What do you think, Gizmo? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, well, um, on that note, yeah, um, I finally went and got Clyde off the side of the road today. He's been sitting there with flat tires. These are brand new tires, but these rims on this side keep leaking. Oh, and before I forget, the Red Suburban. Uh, long story short, a really sweet couple that just moved to Texas seven months ago from West Virginia. Uh, fans of the show, subscribers, uh, hit me up one day and said, we have a Suburban. It's taking up space. We'd like to give it to you. So there it is. <laughs> and his name is Wade. Of course, for Deadpool. And it's a 2002 5.3 4x4, runs, drives, just needs a few little things. So, Deb and Chris, you guys rock. We love this thing. I've already started doing little things like uh, somebody had spray painted the back panels back here like a faded red, and I took them off and made them black again. But uh, yeah, this is gonna be our, uh, I guess you could say our going to town rig. Um, it'll be a lot safer than Swamp Thing because Swamp Thing needs tires and brake work and all kinds of stuff. So every time it rains, I have to pray that I'm not gonna slide into somebody again. Uh, and I uh, wanna make sure the kid's safe, but yeah, Suburban's gonna turn into, uh, it was too, too nice of a vehicle. Um, when uh, Chris had messaged me and told me about it, he had, you know, kind of told me brief rundown, and I was like, well, nothing else. You know, we can use the engine, use the transmission, whatever else, but it's too nice. I can't bear to see that torn up, so 
we're just gonna put it uh, back on the road and use it. So huge shout out to Chris and Deb who are gonna get uh, a heck of a merch hookup. We're going to uh, hopefully, if, uh, if for everybody asking about the merch delivery times, I guess it's Christmas holidays. It's taking like a week to two weeks longer for everybody to get their stuff. So I apologize that it's out of my hands. So, all right, unscheduled uh, video. Thanks to the Iceman saying, hey, do you want an RV? And me not knowing how to say no. And uh, yeah, there will be more videos on this because we uh, have already planned on getting this one on the road, getting it finished out and doing a camping trip with me and the two girls. And if you, want to guys, if you guys wanna watch that kind of be different type of video, we wouldn't be working on stuff. It would just be a little camping trip to somewhere thinking maybe like enchanted rock or something because i would love the little one to see enchanted rock for the first time and if you don't know what that is google it it's awesome so okay well i think that's going to wrap up this one and uh we love you guys thank you so much for all the love support and comments and uh let us know stuff you'd like to see coming up we are this kind of jumped in the way of the Chevy Love, but we are going to be uh, jumping back on that to do some work. And uh, yeah, we will see you very soon in the next one.